Why would a person describe their own death night as wedding night? What does ocean walking behind the sea mean? If you're curious about the answers to these questions, keep watching. Hello and welcome. Today, we are embarking on a journey into the mysterious world of Mevlana Jalal ad-Din Rumi. Was Rumi merely a mystic or, contrary to what is known in the West, primarily an Islamic scholar? While seeking the answer to this question, we will take a close look at Rumi's life, teachings, and great works. Mevlana Jalal ad-Din Rumi was born in 1207 in the city of Bel, which was an important center of Persian culture located within the boundaries of present-day Afghanistan. Later, he and his family moved to Karaman, a region that belonged to the Anatolian Seljuks, to escape the Mongol invasion. After living there for seven years, he was invited by the Seljuk ruler Aladdin Kekubat to Konya, where he spent the rest of his life. While we're at it, let's share a legend that is said to have occurred during this migration, Rumi meets Adar, one of the most famous mystical Persian poets, in the city of Nishapur in the Khorasan province of Iran, and Adar recognizes Rumi's spiritual superiority. He says, referring to Rumi in front of his father, here comes a sea and behind it an ocean. Mevlana's full name is Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn al-Husayn al-Hatib al-Belhal Bekri, but he is more commonly known as Jalal ad-Din Muhammad Rumi. His original name, Jalal ad-Din, means the triumph of religion. Although Anatolia had been conquered at that time, Muslims still referred it as Rum, which means Rome in Arabic, and Rumi adopted this nickname accordingly. In Turkey and Iran, his homelands, he is known as Mevlana, which means our master in Arabic. Mevlana Jalal ad-Din Rumi received education as a Hanafi jurist, following the tradition of his family for several generations. His father, Baha ad-Din Velayd, was the head of a madrasa, Islamic school, and when he passed away, Rumi, at the age of 25, took over his position as an Islamic scholar. One of Baha ad-Din's students, Buran ad-Din, continued to educate Rumi in Islamic law and especially in his father's Sufi order until 1240. Mevlana's public life began afterward, he became an Islamic jurist who gave fatwas, legal opinions, and sermons in the mosques of Konya. He also served as a mola, teacher, and taught at the madrasa. Although in the western depiction of Mevlana and translations of his poetry, his Islamic aspect is often downplayed, it is clear that he was an Islamic scholar, and he expressed this in the following verses. As long as I am alive I am a servant of the Quran. I am the dust on the path of Muhammad, the chosen one. If someone quotes anything other than my words, I have distanced myself and I am angry with those words. His meeting with the dervish Shamsi Tabrizi on November 15, 1244, completely transformed his life. Rumi turned from a successful teacher and jurist into an ascetic. There is even a legend about this, Shams traveled through the Middle East and prayed for someone who could withstand his companionship. A voice asked him, what will you give in return? Shams replied, my head. Then the voice said, the person you seek is Jalal ad-Din of Konya. On the night of December 5, 1248, while Shams was talking to Mevlana, he was called to the back door and left, never to be seen again. It is said that Shams was killed with the approval of Mevlana's son, Aladdin. If that is the case, Shams indeed gave his life for the privilege of mystical friendship. Rumi's love for Shams and the grief he experienced at his death found expression in the lyrical poems of the Divan e Kaber. He went in search of Shams and traveled to Damascus again. There, he realized. Why should I seek? I am the same as he. His essence speaks through me. I have been looking for myself. 
Mevlana spent the next twelve years of his life dictating the six volumes of the Mathnawi to his disciple Huzam ad-Din. In addition to this major work, he also wrote poetry collections titled Divani Kaber, Great Work, and Divani Shams e Tabrizi, The Works of Shams e Tabriz, as well as prose works such as Fihi Ma Fihi, In It, What's In It, Majali Z Sabay, Seven Sessions, and Maktabat, The Letters. Rumi fell ill in December 1273 and predicted his own death, describing it as Shabi Aruz, which means wedding night in Persian. He wrote the following lines. On the day I die, when they carry my coffin, don't think that I have any concern for this world. Don't think I'm sad about leaving this world. Don't cry because I have died. Don't say woe is me. When they bury me, don't say farewell. Know that it is not the time of my separation, but the time of my meeting with my Lord. The grave is a curtain, and behind it, there is the bliss of paradise. You have witnessed the setting, disappearing sun, now see the rising, emerging one. Think, when the sun and moon disappear from sight, is their light lost? Although it may seem like sinking and disappearing to you, in reality, it is rebirth, a return to life. Can it be said that a seed has died when it falls into the ground? Know that death is the pain of the soul being born into another realm. In this mortal world, it is called death. But for the eternal and divine realm, it is called birth. Rumi passed away on December 17, 1273, in Konya. The people of Konya mourned his death, and local Christians and Jews joined the crowd that gathered to bid him farewell while his funeral procession took place. Mevlana's tomb was placed next to his father's grave, and in magnificent mausoleum, the Green Tomb, Mevlana Museum, was built on top of his burial place. I would like to bid farewell with some of Mevlana's most well-known advice. Be like a flowing stream in generosity and helping others. Be like the sun in compassion and mercy. Be like the night in covering the faults of others. Be like a dead person in anger and irritability. Be like the earth in humility and modesty. Be like the sea in tolerance. Either appear as you are or be as you appear. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe.